Hey everybody, Dylan from Noble Records here coming at you with another video. I posted uh, last week my Led Zeppelin Studio album collection. Um, everybody seemed to love that, so as promised, this is my bootleg collection. I've been wanting to do this video for over a year. It's just a really daunting task getting these things in an appropriate order. So, I've done that as best as I can. I kind of sep separated them, for the most part, into different series of bootlegs because they're there's a bunch of information. I'll explain it as I go on. But just a disclaimer, I'm going by like the dates and, um, and cities that are on each jacket. Um, some of them I've noted are a little bit different or the information is wrong. On bootlegs, sometimes the information can be a little bit wrong. Usually they're within the right vicinity of the tour and the city and all that stuff. But sometimes it's, a little, it's just a little screwy. So bear with me. I'll let you know. So we're jumping right into it. Led Zeppelin's my favorite band. And the first live clip I ever saw of them was uh, live at Royal Albert Hall. Uh, this is the complete January 1970 Royal Albert Hall show. I'm sure you've seen this show. Um, it's just an incredible, incredible show. Check out the skatefold. Um, but Jimmy Page is wearing this like real like schoolboy looking sweater. Uh, he sits on stage and plays White Summer. It blew my mind the first time I saw it the video clip of it when I was a kid and so this has always been a big want for me the Royal Albert Hall show this is the complete show um, I'd seen some that weren't the complete show like the one I'm about to show right now but this is a brilliant great pressing uh, beautiful gatefold all that stuff um, so before that I was able to pick this up and this is actually my favorite bootleg that I have in my collection this is called Electric Magic and it is Royal Albert Hall 1970, so it's the same recording, but this is like a condensed version. It's not a double LP like that one is. Only 250 of these made. Check out the vinyl on that. So we will we will get to uh, the trademark of quality stuff. So one of the most popular brands in bootlegs was Trademark of Quality. They made great bootlegs. And one thing you got to understand about Trademark of Quality is they, they put this out in like 2010. So um, they had trademark quality back in the 70s, and they have it now. I doubt the same people run it. Bootleggers can pretty much do whatever they want. They can steal each other's ideas and names and all that stuff because it's bootleg. So um, anyways, this one's in the same series of that one. This is called Tight But Loose. Um, really cool Zeppelin bootleg with that same color vinyl on it, that blue. Okay, this is, this is uh, live in Boston. I believe this is 1970. I can't remember if it's not on the jacket, but... It's live in Boston. It's that Boston Tea Party show. I've got another one of that one I'll show um, further on in the video. Uh, this one is one of the more popular bootlegs. This is Led Zeppelin Mudslide. I've had a bunch of copies of this, but this one's probably my favorite cover that I've had. That killer picture of Jimmy Page with the violin bow. Um, and this is a trademark of quality bootleg as well. Uh, this one, so before this one, there was one called Pure Blues. And on the cover, it just had a capital P and a lowercase b. Pure Blues was the first Led Zeppelin bootleg ever. If you can find one that's the PB, those are worth like a grand. Um, so after they put that one out, they put this one out. It's the same recording. It's March 1970. Just an incredible sounding bootleg. It's not the earliest date recorded, but it is the earliest bootleg that they ever put out uh, for Led Zeppelin. Um, so I'll talk briefly a little bit more about trademark quality stuff. This is an original trademark quality uh, going to California. This one's in shrink. This is incredible condition. Um, I'll pull these out and show you. Just one of them's blue vinyl, and one of them's green vinyl. There's the blue, and there's the green. But um, just really sweet labels on these, and, and the color vinyl is just incredible. There's that black trademark quality label. I try not to touch those too much. This one's this one's like seriously mint condition, and you don't see those like that very much. Um, so that this is probably probably the most valuable bootleg I have, one of them at least. Um, this one's not in as good a shape, but this is Bonzo's birthday party. See, this was recorded on uh, John Bonham's birthday. It was uh, May thirty first, nineteen seventy three. Uh, it was in Los Angeles. It was it's this is a killer show. I love it. But what's really cool about it is Jimmy Page and Robert Plant. They sing. Uh, Jimmy plays Page plays guitar. And Robert Plant sings uh, Happy Birthday to John Bonham. It's pretty cool. So this is that's one of my favorite boots as well. Um, next is live at Blueberry Hill. 
which is a very early one as well. This is the first of the first Blueberry Hill pressings. Um, you can see, yeah, that that's, these are not common. I've only ever seen one. I'll show you the label. It's on Blimp, Blimp Records. Um, Blimp was the first first pressing of the Blueberry Hill bootleg. Um, Blueberry Hill is probably, you know, somebody asked me the other day, what are the top bootlegs to collect for Zeppelin? Blueberry Hill is up there. Um, it's probably in the top three. This one is one, uh, I posted a video a while back called uh, Records I Found in the Trash, and I found this in a dumpster. Uh, this is live on Blueberry Hill, and this is on colored vinyl, red vinyl, blue vinyl. And I'll show you this. This is the coolest box set I've ever had. This is called the Led Zeppelin Trademark of Quality Years box set. Um, it's got live on Blueberry Hill, going to California, Bonzo's birthday party, Seattle Days, and uh, Mudslide slash BBC Broadcast. It's a 10 LP set. It's on beautiful colored vinyl. Um, I'm going to show a picture because I'm not going to pull all this out, but I'll show a picture I've taken. Um, so yeah, see, it's just gorgeous colored vinyl. These are really hard to find. Um, thrilled to have this. But yeah, that's a that's one of the crown jewels of my bootleg collection. So um, I've explained before, there's this guy, his name was Mike the Mike Millard. Uh, in my bootleg video, if you haven't seen it a couple videos ago, I posted one called What's a Bootleg? It's talking about like the nature of bootlegs and all that stuff. There's this guy named Mike the Mike Millard and he, he and he had a he had custom built a wheelchair where he had a a right and left channel, uh, two different microphones in the arms of his wheelchair. He was not disabled, but he made a wheelchair. And on the bottom underneath his wheelchair, he put a real to real recorder, like a really a nice one. And when he would get to the concert, the staff would roll him out to the front and center in front of the stage, and he would get a perfect audience recording of the show. But he has the best audience recordings. They're incredible. So these are a couple from him. That's kind of legendary in the Zeppelin uh, folklore. This is Inglewood Forum, 1977. Excellent show. This is June 27th. And then um, this is the same year. It was June 21st, Inglewood. So he would, every concert at Englewood, he would go to and do this. So he has Rolling Stones, The Who, uh, all these different uh, bands. But yeah, this one's called Listen to This Eddie. This is one of my favorites. This is a really hard bootleg to find. Uh, I looked for it for years. And somebody sent me a message on Instagram. They found it at a, at a um, flea market. So I was like, what? So they sold it to me. But yeah, this one's a, a amazing bootleg. One of, like I said, one of my one of my favorites. It's an incredible sound quality. Uh, another series of Zeppelin bootlegs is called Destroyer. This is uh, the cover of the first. So this one is a soundboard recording of Destroyer. So this is Cleveland, 1977. Um, incredible, incredible shows. Four LP. Crazy long show, um, but this is the soundboard recording. This one's cool because, like, uh, you hear someone throw some firecrackers on stage because apparently in the 70s they did that. Um, and they threw, threw firecrackers on stage, and uh, Robert Plant got all pissed off and started yelling at him. So it's a really funny concert, but that's on this one. This is a soundboard, impeccable, perfect quality. Um, this one is the audience recording from the following night so this one was april 28th that was april 27th 1977 in cleveland so that's uh that's the first destroyer this is the second destroyer um incredible show even though it's audience it's really really good this was also four lps and this is another four lp it's called destroyer three um this one's may 30th 1977 in largo maryland so uh, i know that that date is not correct i can't remember what the right date is but this is destroyer three Four LPs, really cool, same tour, um, and this one's also an audience recording. Moving right along, question that I, I get a lot of times is what's the best sound quality of any Led Zeppelin bootlegs? There's a few out there, and these are later um, concerts. This is like 79, 80, uh, but these are incredible sound quality and really, really good shows. So there is a record label called Waggle. Waggle is an offset of Toasted Records, which is an offset of uh, Trademarker Quality. But anyways, these were impeccable 
soundboard recordings. If you if you can find these, they are some of the best. I don't know why people don't talk about them more, but they fly under the radar. But the first one I got from this series is called Platinum. So this is Platinum. This one is um, 1980, June 20th, Frankfurt. Uh, incredible show. Look at that cover. I love it. Just that double neck guitar, Jimmy Page is getting it. Um, and that is a great representation of what goes on with this record. I mean, it's really great sound quality. So that's part one of the series. Um, they also have this one, which is Moonlight, um, which is also 1980, I believe, in Frankfurt as well. Um, great show. And then this one's called Dinosaur. And they fit together. If you put them together just right, that's the actual picture of the stage. But uh, this one's Dinosaur. Um, so I guess if you put them all together, they make up a couple different concerts in Frankfurt in 1980. But um, like I said, soundboard recordings, excellent sound quality. Um, Waggle also put this version out on Earl's Court, which are really great pressing. It sounds phenomenal. Earl's Court is one of those um, legendary Led Zeppelin bootlegs as well. So here's a more, uh, you see this one around a little bit more, or Earl's Court. This is uh, the same show recording as the last one I showed. Um, this one is uh, May 24th, 1975, and on this one you get the beautiful green vinyl. Um, this is a double LP, but it's green vinyl. Uh, great concert, really great uh, recording of it as well. You get some, like, going to California, that's the way, Woodstock, some some acoustic uh, acoustic set in there uh, that is really good. Because all they always let... Uh, they kind of always let John Bonham play drums for a while when they went to go get a drink. And in this set, uh, I don't know, it seems like they couldn't find him or, or something. I haven't listened to it in a while. But uh, they decided to do an acoustic set because I don't know if he was tired or passed out or couldn't find him or what. I can't remember. Uh, this is another really great, it's pretty good sound quality audience recording. Uh, Mike the Mike Millard uh, recorded these as well. It's called For Badge Holders Only. This is part one. Um, and this is part two of that series. And actually what's really funny is that Keith Moon was in attendance at this concert and they let him come up and play drums on a song. So, uh, really cool recording, kind of a legendary thing. But, uh, yeah, these, these are really, really cool pieces of history to have. So the next few I'm going to show you are like studio outtakes and stuff like that. Um, legend has it. One night, somebody broke into Jimmy Page's house when he wasn't there and stole a bunch of his studio master tapes. So they got like a bunch of uh, outtakes and all that stuff, rare recordings, all that. And so that's where a lot of stuff comes from. That's what, that's the legend. I'm not sure that that's true. That's what people say. Um, the first one I'll show is this 10-inch. It's called The Making of Friends. This was recorded, I know I'm going to butcher this name, uh, but the Brawny R. Cottage, 1970. Um... This one's really rare, and what's really great about this uh, is that there's it says Immigrant Sons 1 and 2, and you can tell when they're singing the song, they have not fully written it yet. So this is really early stages of them writing the song, and, um, and Robert Plant singing some different lyrics, and then he's also kind of singing the melody, but just kind of filling it out and not really singing any lyrics with it, kind of like when you're writing a song, how that kind of goes, but, uh, yeah, this is a really, this is really neat, just to hear them formulating some songs from Led Zeppelin Three, which is my favorite album. Um, and now this one has some of the same material, but some different stuff, too. This is called Three to Get Ready. I love that picture of Jimmy Page on there. Uh, but Three to Get Ready, and the follow-up to that is Four to Go. So Three to Get Ready and Four to Go. Um, but this is some studio outtakes from Led Zeppelin 4. This is one called Tangible Vandalism. And if you didn't really look real close, you might think this is Physical Graffiti. Uh, this is studio outtakes from Physical Graffiti. Um, this is the original uh, release of this that they released in the early 80s. And then this was released recently. This is the, uh, it's called the Alternate Physical Graffiti, but it's the same thing. This one is on some really cool colored vinyl. Just let you peep that, check that out. Look at that, wow. So they only pressed 500 of these. This is number 403 of 500. And then this one's In Through the Outtakes. Uh, in Through the Outdoor Outtakes. 
So that's what that's that series. So now since I kind of covered some bases, I'm going to do some rapid fire just showing you some random bootlegs. So this is Led Zeppelin, uh, Dallas, Texas, 1975. March 5th, 1975. Really great show. Double LP. Um, great looking cover. This is the first Led Zeppelin bootleg I ever found. This is Led Zeppelin on tour. This is a terrible, terrible sounding recording. I can't remember uh, where it's from. Uh, the date and everything, but it's the, the recording is horrible, but I was fascinated by it, and that's kind of what kind of got me started collecting bootlegs. Um, this one is Led Zeppelin live in Tokyo, uh, October 3rd, 1972. Uh, this is a really good quality bootleg. It's on Toasted Records. Um, I love the cover on that one. As a follow-up, this one is October 2nd, the night before, uh, 1972 really great Tokyo shows look at that just him just singing his little heart out um, this one is another one I'm not going to try to pronounce that but as you might have seen this picture before it's the same exact picture that's on platinum and the same font and color and all that stuff but this is a different bootleg uh, so this one is live in Tampa April 9th, 1970. This is a really great recording. It's an audience recording, but it's, it's still really good. Um, this one is... This one's a 3LP. It's live in Switzerland. Zurich, Switzerland, uh, June 29th, 1980. Um, really great bootleg. Jimmy Page is playing a Strat on the cover. So this is a bootleg called Duck Walks and Lasers, Part 1 and 2. Uh, this one is Part 1. It's July 28th, 1973 uh, in New York. So this one both has pictures of Jimmy Page. And this is part two, which is May 22nd, 1977 in Fort Worth, Texas. Killer Jimmy Page pictures. Whoever made these bootlegs also obviously had a man crush on Jimmy Page. This is an incredible the one. This one's live in Southampton, uh, January 22nd, 1973. What I like about this one is the colored vinyl on it. Look at that. It's a double LP. Really great sounding and recording. They put these out probably 2013, 14, something like that. And I got this one when it came out and they were like 20 bucks then. And now these go for a lot more money, but that's a great bootleg. Um, this is one of my favorites. This one's it's Fillmore West, 1969. Uh, April 27th, 1969. This is a great, great bootleg. This is up there with the top ones that you need to have. Um, and there, there's some different covers of these, so just look for uh, the Fillmore West Show 1969 and you'll get it. But yeah, this one's a great boot. This was July 1970. Uh, this one is called Let's Up on the Last Brawl. This is in Oakland, July 1977. Um, this is a really difficult bootleg to find and a pretty cool recording. There's some awesome acoustic stuff on there. Look at that picture of John Paul Jones with his triple neck ditty and uh, Jimmy Page and John Bonham looking like he just got wasted. Uh, this one's called Ledger Domain. This is live in Canada, February 6, 1975. Uh, this one, if you've seen one, there's one called World Tour uh, 1975. That's a really common one. This one is the first generation of that bootleg, so this one came first, but it's the same recording. But it also looks way cooler. Great bootleg. So this one's May 18th, 1973, Dallas, Texas. Excellent soundboard recording. This is called Fractured Ribs. Um, great jacket on here. Great sound recording. This is a really good one to have, too. Uh, this one's hard to find. I, I looked for this one for a while before I was able to find it. A friend of mine had it, and I was jealous for years. Uh, this one's called Custard Pie. This is March 24th, 1973, uh, live in London. Um, just amazing bootleg, beautiful artwork on there. I'll try to get, let y'all see the close-ups of that. But uh, yeah, this one's a good one to have too. They're all good ones to have. I'm probably going to say that on all of them. Uh, this one that was just put out like within the past few months. This one's uh, live in Mon Monterey, 1970. There was a, a couple more that were live in Monterey, 1970, but they were just double LPs. 
This is the full show, which is a triple LP. Look at that. Um, gorgeous. But this is really great. The, the part that they had left out of the double LP version was a whole lot of love, uh, blues medley, and that's my favorite thing that Led Zeppelin ever did. So I had to get that. Led Zeppelin Live in Winterland, uh, April 26, 1969. Great bootleg. This one's Led Zeppelin. It's called Live on the Levee. This is Chicago 1975, recorded in stereo. This is on Box Top Records. Box Top Records, if you uh, are into bootlegs, they are they were like a, a cheap um, alternative. They reissued a lot of stuff, but this is just stamped on. And these look almost like they're um, Polaroids or something that somebody pasted on the front of these, but this is a pretty common brand. Uh, still great sound quality and all that stuff, but yeah, it's box top records, live on the levee. This one's really, really cool. It's called Welcome to New York. Uh, this is not a Taylor Swift bootleg. This is a Led Zeppelin bootleg. So this is July 12th, 1969, live in Central Park. And wait for it, folks. It's a beautiful colored vinyl. Um, so yeah, this one's a mockery. Of trademark quality this was put out within the last couple of years uh, but it is it holds up man this is really great great quality stuff only a hundred of these pressed this is number 50 of a hundred um, but yeah that's a really neat bootleg okay. moving right along this is Led Zeppelin melancholy Danish page boys get it on this is a pretty common one uh, this one is Copenhagen July 7th 1979 and this one is the follow-up. This is the second night. This is Copenhagen warm-ups 1979. I love the Zoso cover. It is so cool. Uh, the back has some hilarious uh, false information on it, but that's a great triple LP to have. This is a um, Led Zeppelin tribute to Johnny Kidd and the Pirates. Uh, this is a great... Uh, it's a soundboard recording of a rehearsal that they did. It was like a sound check. Uh, but it was uh, January 17th, 1975. This is a really cool one. This one is Led Zeppelin Riot House. This is London, December 22nd, 1972. Green vinyl. This is a really, uh, really good bootleg as well. So this is one called Touch and Go. Side one is September 4th, 1970 in Toronto. And side two is in Brussels, 1975. So, not sure why they did that, but they did. Um, this is Led Zeppelin, Hiawatha Express. It's got recordings from Vancouver and a couple of different places. It's kind of a modge podge of live recordings. This is some, some good recordings on this one. This one's Led Zeppelin, How Many More Times. This is a um, soundboard recording from Long Beach, California, March 12th, 1975. This is a triple LP. This one's great, and for three LPs, you can usually find this one are not too terribly expensive. Um, this one is called Yellow Zeppelin. This is uh, Led Zeppelin Live at the Whiskey A Go Go, Los Angeles, California, uh, January 5th, 1969. This is an excellent, excellent recording. It's a very popular Led Zeppelin bootleg recording, but it's kind of hard to find on vinyl. So this was a, a recent, a recent issue here. Uh, this was Led Zeppelin Live in Seattle, March 21st, 1975. And this is the uh, follow-up here. Live in Seattle, March 21st, 1975. And it's got some Boston 1970 uh, to fill in the rest. This is the companion to this, so it's got the full recording on those. This one's uh, Led Zeppelin Teddy Bear's Picnic. This is November 11th, 1971, uh, Newcastle City Hall. Pretty cool looking bootleg. It's a decent recording. This is obviously done more recent. It's not an old one. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of these that are recent that you can get pretty cheap. A few more still. This one's Alpha and Omega. Uh, the, the idea behind Alpha and Omega is that uh, the, there's it's a 4LP. The first concert is Denver 1968, which that is not a correct date. I believe it's 1969. Um, and then the second one is Oakland 1977. So it's supposed to be first concert and last concert, but that's not the first and last concert. Uh, but that's the whole idea behind naming it Alpha and Omega. But yeah, this one, it's cool, it's neat to have, but the recordings aren't that great. So uh, this was called Before the West Was One. This was live in San Francisco, Fillmore West, uh, November 1st, 1969. 
Uh, this is on some cool looking vinyl there. That's a recent issue. This one's called Led Zeppelin, My Brain Hurts. This one is uh, Japan, December 1972. Funny story about this, this is the second bootleg I found. I found this one. I bought a whole record collection just to get this record. The other records were not that good. And I, I saw that this was a bootleg, and at the time I was so hungry for bootlegs, I had to get it. And when I got it and got it home, I saw that the label said this, Songs for Swinging Mothers. And I thought, oh my gosh, they put the wrong freaking record in here. This is, I, I was pissed. Uh, but come to find out, as you learn when you collect bootlegs, sometimes they put bogus labels on there just to throw you off. This is on Jester Records. This is a cheap one. You can get these for like 30 bucks. Um, decent recording. This is uh, live in Japan, uh, 1969. This is another fairly common one. This is Led Zeppelin three days after, live at the Los Angeles Forum, uh, June 3rd, 1973. This is a common trademark or quality one as well. This one's another one that's got a lot of some studio outtakes and stuff on it. This one's uh, Do What you, Do What Thou Wilt. And if you know the significance of that name, it's because that's what's engraved on the dead wax of the first pressings of Led Zeppelin 3. This one is on green vinyl. Really, really cool. Um, but yeah, it's got a nice picture of Robert Plant flipping the bird. Only 100 of these made. This one's number 60. Um, so... This one's called Led Zeppelin, San Francisco, 1969. It's January 9th, uh, 1969. Um, really great show. I showed you the Boston Tea Party up front. This is the same recording of the Boston Tea Party. January 23rd, 1969 in Boston. It's a pretty cool bootleg as well. It's hard for me when I've got the same recording and both bootlegs are really cool. I usually just keep them both. But I'm, I'm trying to figure out which ones I got to keep because this is getting a little bit ridiculous here. Uh, this one is a phenomenal one. This was Led Zeppelin Live at the LA Forum, um, September 4th, 1970. Rubber Dubber. Anything on this Rubber Dubber label is amazing. It's great quality. And this is a you know generic bootleg uh, sleeve that's been stamped on. This one's worth a good bit of money. I found this at a yard sale, guys. It was one of those things where the yard sale, uh, they had all these other records. Like they had some Rolling Stones records that he wanted like $75, $100 for. And there's all these bootlegs over there. And he's like, yeah, give me like two bucks each for those. So I got this one. Um, I'm stoked about it. This one's Led Zeppelin Live Lyceum. Um, this one's October 12th, 1969. Uh, this is a pretty good bootleg. Killer cover on this. This one is Led Zeppelin Burdu. And this one I think is, is collectible because of that picture on the front. That's just such a killer picture of Robert Plant and his little dove there. This is June 22nd, 1977 in San Bernardino, California. This is a great bootleg. Uh, some, of, some of this concert was included on the Led Zeppelin uh, How the West Was One, but it wasn't the same recording. It was a soundboard recording when they put it on the box set, but... It's some of that same show. As you know, the West One was one is a compilation of different recordings and stuff. Uh, but this is some of the experts were taken from this show, and this is a great show. So one of my favorite bootlegs. This was called Led Zeppelin in person. This one is Madison Square Gardens, um, February 12th, 1975. So this is part one of that show. Um, on the back here, it's uh, it tells you that it's a colored vinyl pressing, and only 500 press. This is number. 325 and the color vinyl is red beautiful red vinyl on that one so that is the part one here is part two Madison Square Garden this was called Led Zeppelin in concert but it's the same show and this also has the red vinyl this one's called Led Zeppelin last stand this is not the last concert but this is uh, recorded uh, March 25th 1977 really cool bootleg I love that picture of uh, Jimmy Page on the front there. This one's called Bonzo's Last Stand. This is called The Last Rehearsal. This is September 1980, which I do believe is the last uh, recording of John Bonham. Um, so it's kind of out there. They're in outer space. It's pretty crazy, but Bonzo's Last Stand. That's a cool one to have. Live Aid, Led Zeppelin and U2. This is when Phil Collins 
uh, played for Led Zeppelin. And a little fun backstory, Led Zeppelin, the entire band, was pissed because they said Phil Collins sucked. Um, so anyways, that's my bootleg collection. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I think I got a couple more floating around that was kind of got out of containment, so they're, they're who knows where. And then like some other really random ones really quick. This one's um, called No Introduction Necessary. Uh, this is with Jimmy Page, John Paul Jones, and Albert Lee of 10 Years After. Uh, I actually have been looking for this for a long time, and I have not had a copy, and I bought a collection the other day and had it in there, so I'm excited to hear this. I haven't heard it yet. And this one's called Led Zeppelin Anthology. It's like a Led Zeppelin's greatest hits. I think this is from Korea or something, but it's, it's considered a bootleg. Uh, this one is Led Zeppelin's Golden Hits. This is uh, also another comp. Uh, from Asia. This one is the 1972 bootleg. It's an interview uh, disc, which no one ever listens to those. I don't know why they made them, uh, but it's a picture disc as well. So pretty cool while we're playing. All right. That's all I got for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Bootlegs are obviously really fun for me, but Led Zeppelin's a passion of mine, so I try to get all the recordings that I can. I need to do a video showing you guys what I still need. Uh, there's only a few shows that I really still need, but uh, there are always a couple things that I'm, I'm kind of looking for, but hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for being patient and sitting through this whole video, and we will see you next time.